Hey everybody, it's Aaron again, and we're finally back uh, with the next episode in my Pokemon Red Nuzlocke challenge. Uh, today we finally get to the business of taking on Brock. And uh, I guess you can't really see that anymore. Um, in the newer ones you can tell, but uh, I have evolved my Weedle into a Beedrill. And he's still about as useful as... Nothing. I don't know. I uh, decided to stock up on some stuff before I went in to fight. I don't know why I decided to, to do that right now, but I did. So today I'm testing out my new microphone that I got, so you'll have to bear with me as uh, I start to work with this, as I'm not entirely familiar with messing with sound-related stuff. Uh, but I'm going to keep trying. So, hopefully it'll be better in the end. And so here we go with the first fight in the uh, gym, Brock's gym in Peter City. And so I did, I, I have to say that I did have some fear of going into this gym, uh, mainly because in this generation, the first generation, Brock uh, actually used and had the TM bide. And if you're not familiar with Bide, uh, basically it's a move where the Pokemon stalls out for two turns and then hits back, pays back any damage times two. And uh, that can be really devastating, especially if you don't quite hit enough to take him out. And I was I wasn't too concerned about his Geodude, which we'll be seeing seeing here soon enough. But I was much more concerned about his Onyx because. Uh, even with having super effective Vine Whip and uh, Pokemon around the same level, it's still a very dangerous move to be dealing with. So there we go. And uh, so I switched to my Rattata here because uh, the frickin' Sandshrew and his use of Sand Attack, and I was didn't want to waste any more Vine Whips. Although, ultimately, I decided to run back to the Pokemon Center here. And you can see that I sped up there. I'll try not to do that as much as I can during what I uh, what I actually show you guys of the film. Um, if I grind, when I cut that out, I'm usually using a speed to help speed that part up. Uh, but I try, I'm going to try not to show that to you guys, just because that's... Like, I, like I've said before, I record all of it, and I will show you if something significant happens, but who the hell really wants to sit here and watch me grind for 30 minutes while I try to get my Pokemon? Try and keep them at level, I should say. So here we go with Brock. First gym battle of the Nuzlocke. Brock wants to fight! Brock sends out Geodude! Go for the jugular right away. So Geodude went down easy, I knew that was going to happen. Um, but this was the one that I was concerned about, as I said. And there it is, the thing I was fearing would happen. And as you can see, I got lucky. Let's be honest here though, uh, it's quite possible that if I hadn't gotten a critical hit there, that that still may not have taken Onyx out in one hit. It is most likely true that he would have probably been taken out before Bide worked. But I was a little concerned because from my screwed up time, first few times playing this game. I never noticed that Bide was waited two turns. It always seemed like it waited until a significant amount of damage was done. And so I don't know if in the first generation if that's not the case. Um, and so that was the other thing that was making me nervous. Because I know in the newer generations it's always just two turns and then it deals damage back. But I just really didn't want to push, push my luck there. 
And so for the rest of this episode, we're going to hit the, well, we're going to hit the Pokemon Center here, and then for the rest of this episode, we're going to uh, start our path to uh, um, Mount Moon. And so I deposit um, by it. I'm going to try to, going forward, keep my my uh, inventory empty because you do run out of inventory space in this generation and you run out fairly quickly in fact. And so I've opted to not to try and not have that problem. And that's why like I don't generally I don't stock up as much in this generation as I would in any other Pokemon game. I usually try to carry some of just about every healing item. I don't usually carry a ton of them, but I try to carry some. In, in this generation, I usually only carry Paralyzed Heals and uh, Antidotes. And it's mainly because A, you get the, poke, the Poke Flute once you get to Lavender Town, and that helps with sleeping Pokemon. Um, but I always seem to run, you seem to run across Stun Spore and like Poison moves a hell of a lot more than you see, see most of the other status affliction moves. And here we go. On the road to Mount Moon. So going into these fights I was unconcerned. I figured that this was going to be a cakewalk as usually when I play it does. But um... As you're about to find out, it, it was not nearly as much of the cakewalk as I suspected it would be. And that's my air conditioner, if you can hear it. Pidgey goes down after a good fight. Pokemon Stadium. I haven't played that in forever. I kind of missed that. I I guess, uh, like, I was never impressed. I played Pokemon Battle Revolution on the Wii, but I was never impressed with that. I didn't think it was as neat, I guess, as uh, the original Pokemon Stadium. And I don't know why. I just wasn't impressed with it. And the frickin' sand attack continues. This Pidgey scared the living hell out of me, by the way. Yeah, that's what I really want to have happen. See, it'll get worse. So there goes that one. So I've got a good few episodes left before of uh, pre-recorded stuff. I am going to try moving forward to just record um, record live like I normally do. I'm just not as... Uh, it just didn't work out this way that with the this batch. Um, I personally prefer to record live because I think it's more interesting and you get more uh, genuine reaction out of me. If there is anything to have reaction to. Um, so that's, that's my plan going forward, but, like I said, it just didn't work out with this, this first batch. So here we get to see that, the, uh, thing I was kind of talking about in Viridian Forest, the Poison Sting versus Poison Sting escapades that you get out of, uh, Weedle and Caterpie and Weedle and Weedle in this generation. Beedrill uses Poison Sting on Weedle. It's super effective! Weedle uses Poison Sting on Beedrill. It's super effective! So that's... it's definitely one of the quirks of the first generation of games. Which is kinda neat, uh, really, if you think about it, cause it doesn't exist anymore, but... Uh, the whole bug poison relationship in the first generations. 
Whereas I'm pretty sure nowadays it's just straight resistant. Both of them are resistant to each other. Um, which is kind of kind of an interesting choice design-wise, because uh, you're taking something that was initially weak to each other and you're literally making them uh, it's basically doing the exact opposite and making them both really resistant to each other. Which is quite interesting. So there goes the bug trainer that we supposedly ran into in Viridian Forest. So seeing stuff like that makes me wonder if originally in the uh, when they were designing these games, if they wanted you to wanted it to feel like you were running across the same trainers all the time, and so like the so it feel like the trainers improved. Uh, it never really felt that way because you run into so many, but I, I can see that to some extent, especially in this generation because this generation, and I don't know when this started to be honest, um, Pokemon trainers weren't named, they were just whatever class they were. Uh, and I'm using class in more of a classic RPG sense, meaning, you know, youngsters generally always use the same pool of Pokemon, uh, same with bug catchers and lasses and all that stuff, but if you think so if you think about it they're basically that's their class um, yeah it's I think it's interesting they certainly uh, if they were wanting to do that they'd certainly have an easier time nowadays uh, since they give them names because you could literally run into the same youngster Joey as the, the youngster stereotype is um, you know, if you ran into that same guy six or seven times, you'd probably suspect that it's the same same trainer, especially if they continued to build the team uh, like it was. And so I ran into trouble and ended up switching to Bulbasaur. Um, because I, I was straight up scared. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll go ahead and push my luck here. And I lucked out. So I have to admit, um, going going into this, my Rattata was not all that amazing. Uh, but he really started kicking ass here for me. Well, that's all for this episode. So, as always, uh, take care of yourselves. And I will see you in the next episode where we will fight this bug catcher. Dun, dun, dun.